So now we're going to begin the process of actually installing your big bore kit. Um, first step is you're going to want to take this little cover off right here on your crankcase. Be sure to be very careful to not lose any of your hardware and um, this little gasket right here. And then go ahead and take this off. This way you can look at your flywheel when you're setting it to top dead center. Go ahead, take that off. There we go. Um, there's a little gasket right here as well. Um, just don't remove that from there. I'm going to leave that on. So since you're going to be setting the motor to top dead center, um, I'm going to take this spark plug out so we don't have to deal with the compression of cranking the motor. Wow. That was not as tight as I thought it was going to be. There we go. All right, now start taking your valve cover off. All right. Being careful not to hurt any of these gaskets right here. Mine popped out a little bit, just push it right back in. So we're setting our engine to top dead center. What, what that means is you want to be at the top of the compression stroke, not the exhaust stroke. So it's a four stroke engine. So it's a little, if, you, if you're not entirely sure what you're doing, it's a little tricky to tell when you're actually at top dead center because there's more than one top dead center. So since we have a visual on our flywheel here, you're going to crank your engine counterclockwise until you see a line with a T. All right, so I've just set the motor at top dead center and I'm gonna put my ratchet down here real quick. That's actually not a shot of whiskey, that's oil for when we're uh, gonna be doing the lubrication part of this. But how I know is I'm lined up perfectly with this line that's etched into the side of the crankcase right here. Let me see if I can get a really good visual on that. Try to get rid of that shadow there. So yeah, I'm lined up just about perfectly and you see that T right there. Let me bring my flashlight a little closer. There's a, it looks like another line, but that's an actual, that's, that's the letter T right there. And it tells you that you're at top dead center. But this is a four stroke engine, so you're not sure whether you're on the compression stroke or whether you're on the exhaust stroke. Um, a good way to tell is these valves have no pressure on them. If you can hear that. I can actually move these around, which is nice. Another good way of telling is um, your piston, which I can now look through the spark plug hole, your piston will be at the top of its compression stroke. Right there. You see, you can actually take a look at the piston. It's real high up. That one's definitely at the top. We are Without a shadow of doubt, we are at top dead center. If we weren't and we were on the exhaust stroke, these valves would have pressure on them. So the fact that I can move them around, even with just this tiny little play, if you can hear that, there's no pressure on them, we're at top dead center. Now you're gonna take these three 12 millimeter bolts out here which is going to remove your valve train. Set these three bolts to the side, don't lose them. Don't lose the washers that are on them either. And there we go, we got our valve train off. I'm just gonna set that right there. Take these two pins out, this one right here, and this one right here. Um, I'm not sure if they're interchangeable or not. I'm sure if you switch them, it wouldn't be a big deal, but I'm trying to keep note of the orientation of them. Push rods. They just come out just like that. Again, keep note of their orientation. All right, so we have seven head bolts right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now these are on there pretty tight, so I've already pre-loosened them. A little copper washer right there, be sure not to lose that. It's copper, the reason they make it copper is because copper's soft, they want it to make a good seal on that. It's not entirely necessary, but just to make our lives a little bit easier, we're using the universal to get these 10 mils out. There we 
we go. Now our head is ready to come off. And we should get a pretty good look at our cylinder too. So just kind of wiggle it around. You know, it was on there good. So don't be surprised if it needs a little bit of love. There we go. And there's our head. It looks pretty good. So this is what they call the jug. This is the part that we're actually replacing. So this is what's gonna give us our extra horsepower and this is what we're calling our rebuild right now. Taking our gasket off right here. I mean, gosh, for, for almost 4,000 miles, that does not appear to be in bad condition at all. Wiggle it around, remember, it was on there good. There we go. I'm gonna let the piston just rest there. This is the part we're actually replacing. Now we're to the point where we're replacing our jug. Um, these two little um, spacers like to come off, especially when you pull it off. A couple of them were uh, still stuck down here. So make sure that these are still sitting here. And these two, these two that were originally sitting in the jug, take these off. We're gonna save them for reassembly of the new jug. Uh, for now, set this to the side. Uh, just a real quick note, you're going to need take, to take these two levers out and this has to come out as well. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys how to take this out and I'm gonna tell you guys how to take these out and how to put them into your new jug. However, we're going to um, rebuild our piston and I'm gonna show you how to put the piston rings on. All right, now get real close here. So for our new engine, we're gonna be using G-clips. Um, the reason they call it a G-clip is because it looks like a G. But these ones don't really have, the, the way the manufacturer machined these uh, makes it so that you can pull these inward and then pop them out. These ones are C-clips, so they don't really give you that little median space for you to pull on. So I'm gonna take this tiny little pair of pliers so you see how I'm able to make it bend like that? How I can bend this like that? We just wanna bend that in and then pull one of these clips out. And then once the clip is pulled out, I can slide this little sleeve out. It's gonna be a little metal sleeve. So I slide that out and then I can take my piston head off. And uh, you definitely don't wanna reuse these. And also, please do not drop it into your crankcase. That's what this looks like. That's the difference between a C-clip and a G-clip. Um, to be honest with you, I actually like the C-clip better because they look, they look a little bit more heavy duty, but we're gonna use our G-clips. So now that you've taken your C-clip out, which is just a retainer for this sleeve right here that keeps your head on, it should slide out easily because it's covered in oil. So take that out. Now your piston head is free. And because we have your piston head right here, I'm going to show you how to put your piston rings on. Okay, so you have a total of one, two, three, four, five pieces of hardware in here. Um, you have your oil ring right here, which has two small rings above and below it. You have your wiper ring, and then you have your, compressor, uh, your compression ring. What's really important to note here is that if you push this top ring out and you rub your finger against it it's kind of smooth it's it's very it's very smooth like now if you push your wiper ring out and you run your finger up and down that it's very hard it's well not hard it's it has an edge to it that you can't normally tell if you're holding it away from your face but if you hold it up real close to your face and you feel your compression ring Compression ring's a little bit smooth. Your wiper ring is a little bit hard. So what we're going, it's, it has an edge to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to mimic this setup with the piston rings that we have now. Um, the smooth, the one with the smooth surface goes up top. The one with the um, edge on it goes right down below it. And then it goes um, one ring above and one ring below and then your little squiggly oil ring in the middle. 
Okay, so we're going to start with the more difficult one at the bottom because we don't really want to screw this up. Um, just as a fair note, if you bend or break any of these, your job is over and you're ordering new piston rings. This one especially being your very, very delicate one. So get your bottom ring started. Got a total of five rings here. And just loop that around. You're going to have to... They, they, ha they do have a little bit of pliability, but inserting them like that in my opinion is the is the easiest way to get the most pliability out of them without um, bending or marring them at all. Now this is our problem child right here. This is your oil ring. Same deal. Let me get this piece of cat hair off and then get this oil ring started. Just Just get it started down here and then feed it around the piston head like that all right all very tight tolerances here so we have this squiggly oil ring and we have the bottom one inside of there now and now you need one on top what i mean by on top is you need it right here now so we're going to take this one and we're going to kind of offset it you see where this little break is in this piston ring we're going to offset it just slightly so that there is even even distribution when there's it it, it it makes it it makes it as to where oil cannot get to the top very gently though as we don't want to bend these i mean you can move them and stuff they have a tiny bit of pliability but not enough to where you want to to actually bend the hardware sink it down just like that wow that is perfect now another important step take your wiper um remember with the uh, with the edge on it when you feel it like this this one being your compression ring you feel that it's all nice this one being your wiper ring the one with the little bit of the edge on it we're going to take that and we're going to slide it into its position which is this second one down right here. So again, try to get it into position here, or get it started, I mean. Okay, now, now we have four out of our five piston rings installed, which is our wiper one right here. And this, these are all gonna have to be compressed when um, sliding the new piston into the jug. Now, uh, some big bore kits are just a little bit different with the way they send you the parts. But um, right there, we're going to have the little letter D right there. I'm not entirely sure what that stands for, but I know it doesn't stand for down. It's not supposed to be facing down because they're, it's the same exact build upon both sides of this piston ring. So we're going to want to have that facing up. So now we're going to be inserting our compression ring. This one's going to be a little harder because um, it doesn't have as much play in it. It has the least play out of all of the rings that you inserted. So um, a couple of gentle nudges with this ring. See I got it started all the way around. I'm feeding it and now it's in. Perfect. Alrighty. Insert your first G-clip. Uh, these ones are nice because they have this right here in the middle that I can hold on to it and it allows me to put it in. Also, just as a, just as a rule of thumb, um, this in right here is uh, pointing inwards, this way towards, towards your back swing arm of the bike. So I'm going to insert my first G-clip and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it into this little groove right here. It's very, uh, it's very similar in design to a snap ring. All right, so now I got my first G-clip inserted. It's inserted into this little groove into the piston head. They're very similar to snap rings in design, except I definitely like these ones better because if I wanted to take it out, I could just take these pair of pliers, push inward, and then it'll pop out. Okay, now this is getting pretty neat because we can take our sleeve right here, which I'm going to put a very small amount of oil on. 
So now, since I have my first G clip inserted right here, I'm going to take this sleeve that I've just put a little bit of oil on, and I'm going to put it right over my crankshaft pulley. Find the hole for that crankshaft pulley right there. Okay, cool, we're in place. Now we want to shove this sleeve in gently and then have it hit the back of the G-clip so that we know that it's in. Very, very cool. And now we have our second G-clip, which is going to ensure that this stays put. Perfect. We'll jiggle this sleeve back and forth to see if it stays. Absolutely stellar. Place your new gasket over just like that. Beautiful, we have a brand new gasket on now. And um, remember, make sure these two sleeves are here. And then uh, bring the camera back a little bit right here. Um, it won't let, um, again, make sure the orientation is correct. Make sure that there's this little divot right here facing this way. It'll be the same direction on your crankcase right there. And now we're actually ready to put the new jug on. So now you're installing your old push rod actuators into your new jug. And this is not held in with any threads. So what you're gonna have to do is just push inward on it like that as much as you can until this pops out just like that. Now, be very mindful of where your hardware is going. And it needs to stay in this same position because, as you can see, there's a thread right here. Well, it's held in by one of the head bolts. Take your push rod actuators out now. Now be very careful because you might not have noticed it. But this is called a spring washer. And um, this is going to push against your push rod actuators right here on the jug. So we're going to do this really quickly and we're going to do this really simply. The way this goes is this goes spring washer, push rod actuator, push rod actuator, and then this plug right here. So with these four pieces of hardware, your plug, your spring washer, and your two push rod actuators, keep them in the exact same position that they were as when you pulled them out of this jug, except you're just putting them in your new jug. And then this part takes a little bit of finagling but spring washer goes on the back right here and you want all of these to line up. It's not exactly any, e it's, it's an easy step, but it's meticulous. Okay, so we're not done yet. However, we have our, we have our rod that is inserted partially. We have our push rod actuator here. We have our push rod actuator here and we have our spring washer that is just sitting gently on the end. Now it needs to be tapped in. Make sure that this is facing upward so that the threads are going up and down so when you screw in this head bolt into the bottom, which is the top, but when you screw in this head bolt right here, I can actually show you right now. All right, so to get this in the rest of the way, and I'm gonna show it like this through the bottom, um, Again, the orientation is spring washer, actuator, actuator, then the plug with the original seal on it. So now we can see that this is in position, it's facing the right way, push rod actuators can move freely, they're hugging against the spring washer, and just to test it, we're going to make sure that this is as straight as possible. So a good way of testing whether this is in all of the way is you can push it like that and it'll push against your spring washer. And also the number one way of testing whether this is good or not, because you're going to have to do this during reassembly, is to press on it. And now I can thread this head bolt into it and just hold it like that. So now I know that this is hugging onto these threads that the push rod actuators are resting on. Okay, so now for the fun part. This Hawk 250 becomes a 300cc. Now, 
we're going to take just a tiny little bit of oil. I'm going to put it on my finger right here and I'm going to wipe it inside of the piston walls just for a little bit of lubrication during assembly. Okay. And now we're going to marry it to the crankcase. Let's compress these rings just a little bit. A ring compressor would have helped a little bit with that, but I don't believe it's entirely necessary for this step. Just very even pressure all around. See, now we have visual on the studs. Spread out your push rod actuators on the bottom. And... Get my hands out from under there from being crushed. Okay, so now that your head is on, uh, you want to make sure, just like at the bottom right here when you put these two sleeves on, or dowel pins, you want to put these two dowel pins right here, and then this oil galley dowel pin with this rubber seal right here. However, you don't want to put the rubber seal on quite yet. Um, you should have kept all of this after uh, disassembly until after you get your gasket on. <clears throat> and you can see this is your, uh, your oil galley dowel pin right here because it's just very slightly offset like this. Place it over the head, line it up with all of your dowel pins. Very important, make sure you take this right here a little closer. Place this over here like that. So it might not look like that actually belongs there, but uh, you want to place that rubber rubber seal over this gasket after you place the, the head gasket down. You can see that there's a little space for it right here. It's just very slightly countersunk inward into the head. Double checking that you have all three of these sleeves here. This uh, oil dowel pin sleeve is going to be very um, slightly different than um, these two right here. And make sure you have that little rubber gasket around it. Um, I'm actually not using a new one, I'm just using the old one, so that's why it kind of has that shape to it. A new one will be perfectly round. This is already kind of countersunk because of the weight of the head on it. Okay, so get a little closer. So these dowel pins right here that really hug everything all nice and snug, I just want to let you guys know that when you're assembling this, these aren't going to get these aren't going to go in super easily into the newly machined head. They'll go in, but they just need a little bit of love. So if you find yourself finagling with it, um, that's perfectly fine. That's a little bit what I had to do, especially with uh, with stuff like this. So sometimes it takes a little bit of just a, just a very tiny bit of force like this just to get everything to seat correctly. And before we get started, I just want to let everybody know that I'm going to be coating every large, larger or engine mounting bolt or head bolts in a very fine coat of anti seize. All right, now we're going to be putting in your head bolts. So I'll start with this one. See if I can catch a thread there. Very cool. I'll put these ones on next. And then these top ones, I'm going to get them seated. Make sure you don't forget the washers. Okay. I'm using this just to snug the head bolts down before we torque them. bottom ones I'm just gonna snug down real nice so now we're gonna take this nice pretty tecton torque wrench and I have it set to 24 foot-pounds which is the uh, manufacturer recommendation would be a little easier if the engine was on was actually on the bike 
but uh, I gotta put pressure on here so I can actually get the proper torque, but awesome. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see it, but now you're going to be putting in your push rods. So if you, so if you zoom in to where you're supposed to put your push rods in, you can actually see a little slot right there, right there, almost perfect. There we go. A little slot right there where these push rods are actually supposed to go into. So that's where you want to be putting your push rods in. So yeah, I just like to visually confirm that that's where they're actually going. And I slot that one in right there. And if you miss, there's a chance that they can fall in, but I just took mine back out with a magnet. And now these are inserted properly. Take these two sleeves again that um, you had when the... Um, head was on and put them back in there. See how easy that was to do? And so uh, easy with the bottom portion. And um, now you're going to put your valve train back on. Push rods are going to go inside of these little hammers or whatever you'd like to call them. Okay, now that that's on, you're going to Put in your valve train bolts, snug them down, and then we're going to figure out a torque for them. So before we do our uh, final valve adjustment before putting the valve cover back on, I'm going to torque these down to 20 foot-pounds. They are relatively large bolts. I think they should be fine. Now, manufacturer specifications say that you want a very slight drag when you're inserting this feeler gauge. So I already have these nuts loosened right here. If you've ever done a valve adjustment for these before, insert, slight drag, and same deal for this side. Oh, this one's a little tight. So we're going to loosen that up very slightly. There we go, slight drag. These are perfect. Double check. Three thousandths of an inch. Very slight drag. Three thousandths of an inch. Very slight drag. These are perfect. I'm going to tighten these lock washers down. Take these two covers right here. Take your flywheel cover. Fasten that down nicely. Alright, one of the last steps. Take your valve cover. Then take your three valve cover bolts. And we're gonna go ahead and put these in now. All right, last but not least, take your spark plug and tighten this sucker down. And that, my friends, is how you do the 300cc big bore kit install on your Hawk 250. Well, now Hawk 300. And I'm gonna go install it. Counting the days until you're gone Waiting for us to carry on Oh, I'm running, what am I running from? Time's going by, but where's the time going? I tried to give you everything You took it all and took it for granted If you're still far